Good morning. Today's message will come from the book of Psalms 116. The book of Psalms 116. I read the verses 1 through 13. 1 through 13. <clears throat> I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he had inclined his ear unto me, therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. The sorrows of death compass me, and the pains of hell had hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low, and he helped me. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believe, therefore have I spoken. I was greatly afflicted. Verse 12, what shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I've taken our sermon topic this morning from verse 12. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me, not towards others, not towards somebody else, but what shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? This morning, I want to talk a little while and use for a subject today. If Jesus sent you a bill, how much do you owe? If God, if Jesus sent you a bill, how much would you owe? Think about that for a moment. If Jesus actually sent you, sent me a bill, how much would you owe? A very strong message today. And this is a very strong message today because I don't know how, I don't know what Jesus has done for you, but I know what Jesus has done for not, for me. I don't know what he has fixed for you, but I know what he has fixed for me. I don't know what Jesus has worked out in your life, but I know what he has worked out for me. I don't know what Jesus has healed in your life for you, for your family, but I know what he has healed for me and my family. I don't know what Jesus has done for you, but I know what he has done for me. And the list can go on and on and on. With everybody asking themselves that question. I don't know what Jesus has done for somebody else, but I know what Jesus has done for me. I can be a living testimony of the things that Jesus has done in my life. If Jesus sent his bill to me right now, what would I owe? If Jesus sent his bill to you right now, what would you owe? My Lord, my Lord, words could not explain what I owe. Numbers could not count up what I know. If I live to be a thousand years old, I could not figure out what I owe unto the Lord. If I own everything in the world, I could never repay Jesus for all that he has done for me. I could never repay him for what I not only he's done for me, but my son, my wife, my family, my wife family, those in the, that we prayed for, our friends, and, and those in the community, leaders in high places. Jesus have done some hard things for me, church. Jesus have provided so much for me. Jesus has brought me from a mighty, mighty long way. All of us have gone through some things that nobody know about but you and Jesus, encountered some things that nobody know about but you and Jesus. I don't believe that I'm the only one that can testify that Jesus has brought us a mighty long way. The question asked today, if Jesus sent his bill to you, how much would you owe? Have Jesus done anything in your life that would generate a bill for you? Think about it. Have Jesus done anything in your life that would generate a bill? I know he's done a lot in my life. That will generate bill after bill 
after bill. And if you don't, if you didn't answer that question, let me answer it for you. Yes, and certainly yes. Yes for you, yes for me, yes for all of his children. Jesus has done enough in all of our lives to generate bill after bill after bill. Just in case you don't know what bills are, I give you my key to my mailbox and you can go and open it right now and I can assure you, you will find a bill or some bills located in there. I always tell my wife, I'm going to go and check the mail. Actually, I'm going to move things out to make space so they can put additional bills in. If you don't want to check my mailbox, I'm sure you can check your own mailbox. Check your email. However you get your bills, I can assure you that there are some bills that await you. I want to say and go over and above to say that we all have bills. Bills, not only bills, but bill after bill after bill. Some are generated at the end of the month. Some of those bills are generated in the middle of the month. And then some of those bills are generated in advance before you even use the service. Think about it. I have a bill right now called Optimum. They build you one month in advance. Even before you get it, you're already getting a bill. Bills, bills, bills. What are bills? Just in case somebody didn't know, Pastor, what are bills? They are reminders that you owe for something that you have received or anticipated in receiving. Bills are just a reminder. Sometimes even when you paid the bill, you still, when you made your payment, you still receive the reminders about your bill. I want to step out and say just about everyone under the sound of my voice over have have owed some type of bill or are waiting on a bill to be paid. Maybe your home mortgage, maybe a car payment, insurance payment, rental payment, loan payment, repair payment, credit payment, credit card payment, gas bill, water bill, electric bill. Is that enough? If not, I can go on and on. Tax payment, child support payment, uh, hospital payment, uh, clinic payment, student loan payment, and on and on and on. Bill after bill after bill. That's just in your personal life. But our sermon text asked the question today. Asked the question. I should have paused on that question. If Jesus sent you a bill, how much would you owe? When you owe someone, it is an obligation to pay for something that you have received. Have Jesus did anything for you? <laughs> Think about it. If Jesus did anything for you, our sermon text started out with, I don't know what he's done for you, but I know what he has done for me. Looking at our lives, as much as, as we complain about the prices of things, as much as we complain about the inflation, uh, the world have molded us have conditioned us. Although I murmur and complain about the cost of a meal, I still find some kind of way to tip the lady or the gentleman once they, they complete my deal, my meal. Isn't that amazing? We spend time and minutes, precious minutes and seconds complaining about how high this is, complaining about how high that is. And then once we finish eating, we still find a five or a ten or ones or threes to add on to that meal that you just complained about. Think about that. You know, today, church, if someone helped me out on the side of the road or helped you out, our first response is to give them something for help. And am I right about it? You feel you owe them something because they stopped by and helped you. Have anybody helped you? Have you ever had to experience that perhaps you've helped someone or, or someone's helped you? Has anyone ever helped you or done something nice for you? And, and, and your first response, I say you, we've been molded or we've been conditioned that our first response is that uh, we look for something to give them. We're right away hitting our pockets, trying to find something. We look for something to give them. Our first response is that we owe them something because they helped us out. We owe them something because they stopped by. We owe them something because they seen me stranded and, and as a good Samaritan stopped by to, to see what they could do. It is not a debt that we owe. It's not a debt that you owe the waiter. It's not a debt that you owe that good Samaritan for stopping by and helping you. 
but a way to show your appreciation for what they have done for you. You look and see what you can give them. Today I ask, what about God? What about God? Have God stopped by and helped you? Have God stopped in and stepped in and fixed something for you? Have God sent angels to rescue you? Have God sent a ram to, uh, in a bush to take your place? Have God done anything for you that would generate a bill? Because of all that he has done for you, all he's done for your family, all of your prayer requests, all of your hardships, all of your trials and tribulations, all of your storms, all of your protection from the, and all the many angels and rams and for all his blessings, for all his love. What about Jesus? What about Jesus? If Jesus sent you his bill today, what would you owe? Man, that's a very strong statement. When God gave me that, man, I froze for a moment. It took me a while to get into the message today because I thought about that. If, if Jesus sent me a bill, what would I owe? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. If he sent you a bill for that, what do you think you would owe? Not his one of his three, not one of his seven, not one of his twins, but if he sent you his only begotten son. If he sent you a bill, what would you owe? At that old rugged cross, Jesus hung, bled, and died for you. Hung, bled, and died for me. If he sent us a bill, how much do you think we would owe? He did what no other could do. How much do you think we would owe? He, 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 start, he, started, that you, he started you out on a brand new day today. What do you think you would owe if he sent you a bill for waking you up? If he sent you a bill, he kept you safe from all hurt, harm, and danger last night. If he sent you a bill, that's actually, just think about these things. I don't know what he's done for you. I don't know what he's fixed for you. I don't know what he came and worked out for you. But I know what he has done for me in my life. What would you owe? This day and every day, God can list thing, one thing after another that his son has done for you. He, God can list one thing after another what his son has done for me, done for those that loved him, done for those that served him, done for those that didn't serve him, done for those that don't love him, done for those that don't believe him, as well as for the ones that don't, don't have no thought process of serving him. For sinners as well as saints, if God sent a bill for his son, Jesus, all that he's done, what would you owe him? What would you owe him for your family? The scripture asks, what shall, verse, a uh, key text asks, what shall I render unto thee, what shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards them, towards someone else? No, what should I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? I mean, that's a personal question for all of us. None of us know what God has done for the other. But one thing is certain, he has done for all of us. He has performed a miracle in all of our life. We can't count all the things that God has done for us. Truly, God has been good to all of us. And because of God's goodness, we need to present. Because of God's goodness, we need to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. We must never forget. We cannot. We must never forget what God has done. Never forget what God is doing and never forget if tomorrow come what God is still yet willing to do in our life. Oh, what a mighty good God we serve. Yes, Jesus paid it all. And the songwriter saying all to him we owe to love the Lord with all our heart. Love the Lord with all our mind. Love the Lord with all our soul. Understanding that we can never repay Jesus for all that he has done. We can never repay him for all that he has done. But because of his love, because of his grace, because of his mercy, I can be a part of letting everything that had breath praise the Lord. I don't think people are giving God enough praise. I don't think they're giving Jesus enough praise. They're running with the blessing. We need to be a part of that. Let everything that had breath praise ye the Lord because he's worthy to be praised. In closing, this morning in the book of Mark, St. Uh, St. Mark, chapter 12, the disciples asked the question, and some of you may have that same question today. And the disciples in Mark 12, 14 and 15, 
And when they come together, they said unto Jesus, Master, we know that you are true. And we know that you regarded not the person of man, but teach it the way of God. Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? They was asking him, should we give tribute to Caesar or not? Verse 15, ask, they asked him another question. Shall we give or shall we not? Someone may be asking today, do I give or do I not? But Jesus know, Jesus knew that they were trying to tempt him. So he told them, he said, I'll tell you what, disciples, I want you all to go and bring me a penny. And they brought forth the penny that Jesus had asked for. And Jesus then asked them a question. He asked them, whose image and superstition do you see on the penny? And they answered him and they said, Caesar. Then Jesus answered and said, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar and to God the things that are of God. This morning, somebody may be asking that question. Somebody may be tossing, what do I do? What do I give? Who do I do? He said, give unto them that belong to them and give unto God what belongs to God. This morning, church, God is letting us all know to give unto Caesar what is Caesar and give unto God what is God. Psalms 116, verse 12, our key verse, ask that question, what shall I render unto the Lord? for all his benefits towards me, to do unto others as Christ have done unto me, to love ye one another as Christ have loved you, to forgive ye one another as Christ have forgiven you. What would you, what if Jesus sent a bill, what would you owe? What would we owe if Jesus sent a bill right now? To do unto others as Christ has done unto you. To love you one another as Christ has loved you. Forgive you one another as Christ has forgiven you. If Jesus sent you a bill for doing that, what would you owe? This morning, this morning, church, Christ is not sending you a bill. I'm so grateful. We're so blessed today to know that Christ is not sending us a bill. But a reminder. He is sending you a reminder. The things that you are seeing Christ do, like so, likewise are you to do ye one to another. What would Jesus do? Those things that you are seeing Christ do, do ye likewise. Because if Jesus sent you a bill, what would you owe? Let's not, let's not, I want to leave you with a few things right now in closing. God's message I spoke for itself. But I, want, I thought about some things this morning in the commentary. I just want to share with you about that bill from Jesus. Jesus is not sending you a bill. But just in case he did, what would you owe? Jesus said, I'm going to, I thought about it, I would send you a bill for rent. The world is your home. This world is your home, even though we complain about it. This side, that side, that type of people, this area over there, railroad tracks, east side, west side, north side, south side. The world is your home. Not only is your, it's, this is your home, but it is fully furnished. The Bible says the earth is the Lord and the fullness of thereof. The world is your home, fully furnished. The grass is your carpet. The sky is your ceiling. Fully furnished. What about how much would you owe if he sent you a bill for rent in the world today? Say, well, what about that bill for lights? The sun, the moon, the stars, they all give light. This is your light bill from Jesus. What would you owe? Your front door of your house is a sunrise that tells you it's a new day. What would you owe? What about your back door? The sunset that let you know that your day has come to an end. How much would you owe for a bill like this? You have it already, but there is no bill to pay. The next bill is what you cannot live without. What is one thing? What is it that you cannot live without? Somebody probably say, pass this my cell phone. No, it's not your cell phone. But one thing that we cannot live without is oxygen. 
And the commentary said that we all have to have oxygen. If it wasn't here, we all would die. Say, so, well, Jesus, I give you the word commentary, so I'm going to give you an example. Oxygen is five cent per breath. 13 breath per minute equals 65 cent a minute. $39 a minute. $756 per day. $6,552 per week. $28,370 per month. Could you afford it if Jesus sent you that bill for oxygen? What about your bill for food? You and I have never experienced hunger. Although we complain, Although we talk about how hungry we are, how hungry we are. Do you know that we live like kings and queens? We may not pay the price of kings and queens that the kings and queens pay, but we throw away more than some people eat. Next time you throw away food, I want you to think about it. If God sent you a bill, what would you owe? Next bill is our family. Where did you get your family from? Well, your family came from God. What if God sent you a bill for your family? Do you have a good wife? I do. Do you have a godly wife? I do. Do you have a good husband? Do you have a godly husband? If so, what would you, what do you owe Jesus for that wife? What do you owe him for that husband? Whoso findeth a wife, find it a good thing. What do you owe Jesus for that good wife? Do you have children? Can they see? Can they walk? Can they talk? If God sent you a bill for your children, what would you owe? And then finally, church, Jesus died on the cross for you. He died on the cross for me. What if God sent us a bill for his son, Jesus, hanging, bleeding, and dying, and all that he went through for a sinner like us, what would we owe? Reminder today, we need to be thankful. Not only thankful, you need to know that you're blessed knowing that Jesus is not sending you a bill. For all that he has done, he is not sending you a bill. For all that he's yet willing to do, he is not sending you a bill. But he is asking you to be ye thankful in all things. Instead of complaining, Mummering and complaining, we need to be ye thankful. The bills are high, but be thankful that you have a job to pay your bills. This is one of mine. Your clothes are too tight. You're putting on a lot of weight, but be thankful that you've been eating good. Your yard is needing more, and the windows are need cleaning, the gutters are need cleaning, the roof is leaking. You need work done on your house. Instead of complaining about it, just be thankful that you have a place to stay. You only can find a, a, a spot to park. You park and looking to get into a store and there's no park parking spaces closing. You have to park a long way away from the store or event or whatever you're going to. Be thankful that you're able to walk. The electric bill or your gas bill may be high, but just be thankful that you was able to keep warm during the winter. You was able to stay cool during the summer. Somebody keep complaining about this, complaining about that. And you say, oh, here they come again. They can always complain about this. Just be thankful that you have ears to hear. The piles of the laundry keep getting higher and higher. Don't complain about it. That means that you have been blessed to have a change of clothes. I can go on and on and on. But I just want to close with that topic today. If Jesus sent you a bill, what would you owe? Think about it. Think about it. I pray and trust you've gotten a thought out of the message today. I ask you not to hide these words in your heart, but I ask you to share these words with this message with someone else. Because a blessing isn't a blessing until you share it with someone else. I pray that you will be richly blessed this hour. God bless you.